somebody here maybe on the streets of Canada this afternoon like a copy of God's Word offered to you quite freely, New Testament of the Bible, uh, yours um, simply for the taking, freely offered to you, and without cost or obligation, if you like a copy of God's Word, uh, do feel free to come and ask for one. You've had it read for you in public here today. You've had it proclaimed here in public today. And it's offered to you written uh, in public here today. What will God say to you in that day if he has found you to be amongst the number of those who have completely and utterly rejected his word? The engrafted word, I tell you, that is able to save your soul. Like a copy of God's Word, do feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly place into your hands. The Word of God, we have an account. Jesus, as he walked this earth, ministering to men and women of all kinds of shapes and sizes, all kinds of problems, issues, sickness, pain and death, you know, the kind of stuff that we are confronted with, faced with today in our modern world just the same. Technology comes, fancy ideas, you know, are invented, but you know, my friends, one thing that never changes, man's sinful condition, faced with sin and death and hell, and of course, um, my friends, the judgment of God. The judgment of God. Judgment! So like I say, my friends, um, the answer, the remedy, as my colleague, well, has um, well expounded to you. Faith towards the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, Behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto him. But so much the more went in a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmity. A man full of, full of leprosy, a killing disease, my friend. A killing disease just like COVID-19. A killing disease just like cancer. A killing disease, my friend, just like sin. He was full of leprosy, just the same way that you're full of sin. And it's killing you just the same way as leprosy back in the day killed men and women. Unless, of course, that is they were healed. But who was ever healed back then of such a disease as that? Well, only those touched by Jesus. And who today, I ask you, full of the disease of sin, who has ever cured, who ever gets healed, I ask you? but those who are touched by Jesus, by the Son of God, and only they. In the Bible, my friends, the disease of leprosy is likened to the disease of sin. It's a metaphor, you know? It's a picture, if you like, of sin, because it was a killing disease, you know? Because it, uh, well, it separated people from society. 
and from the company of God's people. And of course, uh, well, they were, they were termed to be unclean, but that's what sin makes you. It makes you unclean. It makes you dirty. It makes you defiled in the eyes of God, untouchable. The leprosy, the man full of leprosy, you know, he has boldness in coming to Jesus because, well, he wasn't allowed to come to anybody. He had to run about with a little bell tinkling, unclean, 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 crying out so that everybody could avoid him. But of course, here you are today polluted with the uncleanness, with the disease of sin, but I don't see any separation amongst you. I don't, hear, I don't see many of you doing what you ought to do, run about with a little bell and crying out, unclean, unclean, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, avoid me like the plague. No, all happy and content with your disease, even though it's killing you. Unbeknownst to you, of course, unbeknownst to you. But this is the disease, my friends. This is the disease that the man has. He is hopeless, hopeless, my friends. He is lifeless. He is, my friends, a dead man walking. Nobody but nobody is going to touch him. Nobody is going to help him. His case, my friends, is a bad one, a serious one, a deadly one, my friends. It's going to kill him. It's going to take him out of this world. And it's going to take him into hell, separated from God and from God's people for all eternity. But that's a very apt picture, my friends. A very clear, a very distinct picture, my friends, of sin, of the disease of sin, my friends. Oh, I tell you, it's a dreadful sin, and you, you don't know the half of it. Oh, we can tell you something of it. I can tell you from the Bible about it, but until you see it, until you're convinced, until God convicts you of it, only then, my friends, then I tell you, he gives you a glimpse of the reality of your sin. I tell you, you'll swim shark-infested waters to get to Jesus Christ. Because only a touch from him would heal you. Only a touch from him would save you. Only a touch from him would rid you of the disease. Nobody else. But you see, my friends, you're oblivious. You're oblivious to the fact of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. You want to know about the reality of your sin? You want a diagnosis of your disease? Well, then you must needs go to Mr. Moses. You need to go back to the Old Testament. You need to go back to Exodus chapter 20. And you need to read the law of God the summary of God's law, the Ten Commandments, and read them, my friends, over and over again, until every ounce of your self-righteousness is shredded, until you've got the diagnosis, until you believe, Dr. Moses, until you see, my friends, that you're an apostate departed from God, and that you're an idolater, that you're a blasphemer, that you're a killer, a murderer, and that you're a liar, and a coveter, a lustful, lustful person. Until you know by the law is the knowledge of sin. Only the commandment, only the law of God, my friends, can give you the right and the true diagnosis of your condition of the disease that's in you and killing you and destroying you. The wages of sin is death, my friends, death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This leper with his disease, full of, the, full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face 
the way to come to Jesus. He educates you, don't you see, in the way that you must come to Jesus. On your face, my friend, a dirty, vile, unclean, defiled sinner. On your face, my friends, before the cross of Jesus, before the Son of God, before the mighty Lord Jesus. On your face, with your face in the dirt, before the Son of God, and crying out to him that he would have mercy upon you and deliver you from your dreadful killer disease of sin, my friends. There's education for you, you see, all over the Bible. Let this other sinner, let this leper teach you how you approach Jesus, yeah? Not by a light and flippant, you know, paying lip service to the Son of God, thinking that you're due something, some thinking that he owes you something. No, no, my friends, you come to him vile, you come to him defiled, you come to him unclean, you come to him as a monster, a monster in your sin, my friend, depraved, totally in your mind, given over to reprobate minds in this society in which you exist today. I don't say live, exist, my friend. On your face, on your face before the cross of the Son of God and crying out to him that he would have mercy upon you. He besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. There's your prayer, Lord. Lord and God, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, the Son of God who came down, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Nobody big enough, nobody good enough, my friends. Nobody with the ability but God himself can save you from your killer disease. Sin, my friends, killing you. Killing you softly, some of you. Killing you unawares, some of you, but killing you. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Only God himself, able, only God with the ability, the power. He was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Son of God came. Lord, Lord, that's, your, that's the way you talk. That's the way you address him. Lord. Lord, if thou art willing, because it's not guaranteed that he's willing to save you, is it? He might not hear you. Your prayer might not reach above the ceiling of your living room. No, no, my friends, it's not guaranteed. Not everybody gets saved, and not even everybody that seeks him gets saved. He didn't come to save everybody. He came to save those whom his father gave to him. He came to save those whom his father draws to him. He came to save those whom God chose before the foundation of the world. He came to live and die for his sheep, not the goats, not the goats. The goats, they go to everlasting destruction. Only the sheep go to everlasting life. So don't take it for granted, my friends. If you're to seek him, you must put your whole heart, life, and being into it. If you seek me with all your heart, you shall find me. But lip service, my friends, to religion will not do it. And neither will a mess of religion do it. Going to a church won't do it. No, no, my friends, not your modern-day churches, not the apostate institutions such as the Church of Rome or the Church of England. No, no gospel there anymore. None at all, my friends. 
It's to Jesus that you must go. It's to the Lord that you must go. If thou art willing, Lord, if thou art willing, maybe he is. Call upon his name. You may, you might be saved. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. How is he able to cleanse a leper of his killing disease? How is he able to cleanse you of your filthy sin disease that's killing you? Oh, my friends, that's what he came for. That's what he lived for. A blameless life, my friends. A spotless life. And died on a cross, shed his precious blood that you might be washed and made clean. Because only the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, will cleanse you of your killer disease. Sin, my friends, nothing else will wash you. What will wash away my stain, the hymn writer says? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What will make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, he says. Oh, go where you will, the West Midlands. Go where you will, the country over. Ask them for something that will wash you, cleanse you of your killer you disease, said my yeah, friend. They'll laugh oh, you out of the place. It, They'll Eddie. tell you there's no yeah, I such suppose, a thing. Cause, cause I haven't got any kids, so I spoke but, to you. Oh, my yes, friend. my friends, there is. Oh, there is. They don't know. They don't know, but there is. The blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, was shed. On the cross, my friends, that vile sinners, defiled and unclean, just like the old leper, with their killer disease in them, he died to wash them and make you clean. But here's my question to you. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You need to be. Moses, in the law, says, without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin, no healing, no cleansing. No, my friends, God himself has provided the blood sacrifice, his only begotten son, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world and would take your killing disease out of you would wash you and make you clean. But you have to go to Jesus. You have to go to him. He must wash you. He must cleanse you. Oh, the disease clings to you, my friend. And will draw you down to death. Will draw you down into the grave. And then open up the grave underneath you and draw you down into the damnation of hell. That's the end of the killer disease, you see. It kills everlastingly. Everlasting death, my friend, awaits you at the end of your course, your existence in this world. So, my friends, I bid you go to Jesus and cry out to him, Lord, if thou art willing, Thou canst make me clean. His answer to the leper, he put forth his hand and touched him. Nobody touched lepers back in those days. Nobody touched them for fear of they contracted the disease themselves. But here you are today, my friends. You live in a society, you know, where the killer disease of sin is rampaging through your society, through your culture, but nobody's afraid. You mix with unclean sinners. You mix with uh, your fellow sinners, you know? And you, 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 you contract, you know, the disease, you contract their, their, their habits, you know? Their fornicating ways, you know? Their, their sodomy and and their lesbianism, you know? And all the filthy lust that fill your society today, you know? You contract their habits, and you make your case, you make the disease worse and worse as you go on. But my friends, 
unless Jesus touches you, you see? I mean, who would want to touch you? Who would want to touch you in your defiled, in your unclean state and condition, separated from God, and you ought to be separated from the society of men, not fit to live, my friend. That's what the Bible says. Read it for yourself. Romans chapter 3, check it out. Unprofitable. Good for nothing, says God. That's your state and condition. Naturally born into this world. You contract the disease in your mother's womb. That's where you catch it. Conceived in sin, born in sin. And you live in sin, my friends, all your days with the disease eating away at your soul, killing you softly. And then you breathe your last and you go out of this world, separated from God, damned for all eternity, my friend. But oh, if Jesus touches you, oh, if Jesus, Jesus hears your plea, Lord, Lord, if thou art willing, thou canst make me clean. If he hears your call, if he hears your cry, if he hears your serious heart cry, then maybe, who knows, maybe he'll reach forth, maybe he'll touch you, unclean as you are. Sin couldn't touch the holy, holy Son of God. It had no effect on him. He wasn't conceived in sin. He wasn't born in sin the Holy Son of God, my friend. And oh, oh, my friends, that's what qualified him to go to the cross and die for sinners like you, with the killer disease in you. Those, my friend, oh, I tell you, those who receive a touch from Jesus, just one touch, I tell you, from the Son of God, the Lord of glory, one touch from him, and I tell you, you're made well. You're made well. Rid of the disease. The disease, my friends. Oh, the disease purged from you. No longer any power over you. No longer with the power to kill. Because Jesus kills the power of sin in those, my friends, whom he touches with his, the touch of life, the touch of cleansing. Oh, the touch of Jesus, I tell you, that brings eternal life to the soul. My sheep, he says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never, never perish. Touch from Jesus, that's what you need, my friend. I will, he said, I will be thou clean. And immediately, immediately, the leprosy, the killer disease left him. I tell you, my friends, that's the case of every sinner, I tell you. Whoever came seriously, whoever came sincerely to Jesus, he promises, he says in his word, he will not cast out those who come to him. And I tell you the touch. One touch from Jesus, I tell you, and your killer disease is gone. Depart from you, never, never to return again. Eternal life, eternal security, eternal, everlasting life. For those that is who come to Jesus, who come to him in faith, that's the only way to come to him. Come to him believing. You get nothing from him. You get no touch from Jesus if you come in unbelief. You get no touch from Jesus. You get no healing for your disease of sin unless you come in faith, unless you come believing. If, if thou canst believe, he says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Only believers. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Only believe, says Jesus, trust in God. Faith, my friend. That's how you come to Jesus. 
and how you receive his healing touch. Spiritual healing touch, my friend, making you well in your soul, putting the life of God into you and the love of God into your heart. It's what Jesus means when he says that you must be born again. Because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Because the killer disease of sin, it blinds him as well. Unable to see. Spiritually dead. Spiritually blind. As well as spiritually deaf, my friends. Here is Jesus able to put the breath of life into you able to grant you the touch of healing take away your killer disease of sin my friends and he's proclaimed to you he's declared week by week to you and still you will not come to him that you might have life how stupid i ask you how daft is that madness my friends abounds in the world but no no madness like that i tell you a touch from jesus that's what you need my friend and he charged the leper he tell to tell him tell no man but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according to the commandment of moses for a testimony unto them. He sends them to the dead religionists, you know, to testify to them of the healing power of Jesus, to testify, my friends, of the salvation power in Jesus Christ. Men who trusted in their dead religion, just like today, you know, Islam, Roman Catholicism, the witch, the Watchtower Society, religion abounds in your world. Future dead religion with the killer disease of sin in it. And they think that their religious practices make them right with God. No, says God. No, says Jesus. Go to them, he tells the leper. Go to them for a testimony and show them that the power to heal the power to save from the killer disease of sin is in me and Jesus and no other. He bore testimony to their dead religion. And my colleague and I, we stand here today, week by week amongst you, to bring the same testimony to you, my friend, that dead religion's no good to you, a dead prophet's no good to you. It's a living Savior that you need. One who's alive and alive from the dead, my friend. And alive forevermore. It's a living Savior with power, I tell you, that you need. With the power to kill the killing disease in you. With the power, my friends, to take away your sin. Never, never to return it to you again. To destroy the sin in you, my friend. And to give you life, life eternal, life everlasting. Jesus, my friend, a person, the Son of God, who died on a cross, who so loved sinners that he gave himself up to the death of the cross that they might be cleansed, washed, made whole, made fit for life, and made fit for God, and made fit for heaven one day. Only Jesus, only he can do that for you, my friend. Nobody else. He tells the leper man not to tell. Tell anybody, but you know, the news just spread and spread. You know, a man full of leprosy, cleansed, you know, of his filthy disease. Well, I ask you, I mean, who could keep quiet about that? Oh, I tell you, if God saves you, if Jesus cleanses you, if Jesus puts life into you, 
My friend, you can't keep quiet about it. You must confess his name before men. No, no, you see, my friends, the difference, the difference between the disciples of Jesus then and now and those, you know, who have just got religion, you know what I mean? Without any life in them, without any real hope in them, you know? They go to their churches week after week, their dead, putrid religion with no life in it, no power in it, you know? But you get somebody, I tell you, who's had a touch from Jesus, you get somebody that he has touched and put his life into them and cleansed them of their killer disease of sin. Oh, I tell you, you can't shut them up. They won't be shut up. You can threaten them. Oh, you can, you can persecute them. You can maybe even try and kill them, but you won't, you won't shut them up. No, my friends, we have to tell you we are commanded. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Why? Because you're all polluted with the disease. You've all got the killer disease. Sin, my friends, and it's killing you. We can't keep it to ourselves. In love, in love, we must tell you. If your house was on fire and your neighbor next door knew about it but you didn't, what would you think of your neighbor if he didn't waken you up? If your neighbor loved you, my friends, he would not just knock on your door, he would kick your door down and he would come in and drag you out of the house because he loves you. And my friends, I want to tell you, your house is on fire. Your house is on fire. It's going to go up in flames. Yeah. Servant heat dissolves, my friend. And you go up with it. You go up with it. Unless somebody comes, unless somebody proclaims the gospel to you, unless somebody tells you the truth about your state and condition, unless somebody tells you about your depravity, unless somebody tells you about your vile separation from God, your impurity, unless somebody tells you about Jesus, my friends, there's no hope for you. There's no hope for you. And only the disciples of Jesus, only they would be willing to do that. Only those who have received a touch from Jesus themselves, nobody else would do that for you. But my friends, who knows? Who knows, but maybe today somebody, somebody here in Canada today, has happened before, and it'll happen again. Somebody will receive a touch. Not the unbelievers, not the ungodly wicked, not the blasphemers, not the mockers, not the sneerers, not them. No, no, my friend. Those, those who know that they're ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for sinners, my friend. Those who know that they're ungodly. Those who know that they're sinners. And those, my friends, who like the leper man, they want to be made clean. Their desire is that Jesus should touch them and make them clean and rid them of their disease of sin. My friends, you need a touch from Jesus more than you need to breathe, but you don't know it. You don't know it, my friends. But then, of course, my friends, I have to remind myself that beneath the cross, as Jesus was dying, my friend, there were mockers there. Oh, there were mockers and sneerers there. There were thieves and gamblers. There were soldiers. But there were people whose eyes were being opened. There were people who were being touched by the Son of God, even as he was dying. And believing, my friend, believing and receiving salvation. 
eternal life in his name. So, my friends, I bid you go, if you will, to Jesus. If he's willing, if he's willing, he'll make you clean. Go to him. Cry out to him. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Dying in my sin, life ebbing from me. Unclean, unclean, unclean. Jesus, touch me. Cleanse me, if thou wilt. He bids you, my friend. He commands you, admonishes you. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Why? For the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the only way that you can enter his kingdom. Repent ye and believe the gospel, can I? Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Except you repent, all oh, likewise perish in your killer disease of sin. It will take the life out of you and leave you in hell unless you repent and believe the gospel. You'd like a copy of God's Word offered to you freely without cost or obligation to you. You're simply and only for the taking. May God bless you and have mercy, mercy upon your sin-sick and sin-diseased soul.